I don't know. It's, uh, but, uh, bueno, verla sí va a estar, pero vive en un, en un pueblo acá por Guanajuato que no, no tiene mucha señal. Uh -huh. Ahora de plano está trabajando. Ah, está trabajando. Mire, como, realmente ella nada más, ¿cómo explicarlo? She's only looking for the paper. Uh -huh. yes. Ya. Yeah. Pero de ahí fuera, se van a meter más. Jessica debía estar aquí. Las dos Jessicas. I mean, este, Vianney y yes, uh, the other Jessica. Nunca les mando. No me sé. Es because my iPhone se está actualizando al iPhone 16. <risa> ah, no. okay. Oye, ¿y también contigo podemos hacer el TOEFL? TOEFL, CENI, en TKT. También vendo sí. pepitas en la noche. Y, 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 <risa> Ah, sí. Alegrías. Alegrías. <laughs> okay, that was a bad joke. Okay, anyways. Ah, uh, wait a minute. No, este no es. Ah, uh, yes, this is it. So, um, today's talk is about. Okay, can you see my screen first of all? Yes, cool. Today's topic is about. Something that uh, we, we as a teacher tend to forget. However, it's some of, if not the most important, it's for me and my experiences, the, uh, the item that makes the difference between a Mexican studying English and a Mexican speaking English, okay? And this is called communicative activities. Different, this is called in, uh, in Cambridge, different books, different terminology, communicative activities, conversation tasks, oral production uh, activities, um, talking time activities, different book, different names. At the end is communication. It has to do with communication in the classroom, okay? Um, So what is communication, Salen, for you? When you, when somebody knows how to express their, their self. All right, that's a good definition. What about you, is the, uh, Christina? What, what's communication for you? Mm, communication is sharing ideas, and it could be verbal communication, nonverbal communication. Um, Visual. Good, excellent. So check this out. Check this uh, this uh, definition. Communication is defined as the sum of total of information about feelings, attitudes, and wishes, transmitted directly and indirectly, consciously and unconsciously. The third communication covers just about any interaction with another person. It includes sharing information, ideas, and feelings between people. Do you agree? Yes. yes, ¿no? O sea, le dice el novio a la, no, la, la novia al novio o la, la, la pareja al otro pareja, ¿no? O sea, me, me amas, pues te mantengo, ¿no? <laughs> That wouldn't be a good communication, right? But it, it has to do with all the things, all the, 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 all the context is the word, all the context included so that the communication is well received. Read this, Cristina. Communication is a two-way process. When you communicate, you perceive the other person's responses and react with your own thoughts and feelings. It is only by paying attention to the other person that you have any idea about what to say or do next. Good. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes. It's actually, it's actually the, 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 the point because if it, if it is in a two-way process, then communication is not accomplished, right? Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens in the classroom. What could happen, Salem, if good communication is missing? Um, maybe the class is frustrating because <laughs> you don't know if the, if the students are understanding you or, or maybe the students really don't have any idea what, what are you talking about. <laughs> 
Okay, good. There might be, the students will feel angry, worry. There might be irritation. And most importantly, sad to say, the learning process is broken. Yes or no? Hey, 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 tranquila. Yes. Very good. So bottom line, it's important to communicate, yes or no? Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about then some of the tendency or the, the I don't want to say the newest tendency because it's not actually new, but it's new in our country <laughs> and it's new for the, the teachers, okay? And this is called the communicative approach. The communicative approach or the communicative language teaching, the CLT, you can actually Google it and you will find 1.5 billion different pages and then one or two read it. It's the, shh, the, 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 the approach to the teaching of second and foreign languages. Pause here. Teachers, tell me, Mrs., tell me. In Mexico, in our country, do we teach second or foreign language? And this is very, very important to define. Um, second. Second, second language? Okay. I think it's foreign language because it's not like, I don't think English is official in here. So it's more like if you need it for work or school, you, you learn it, but not something but, like you really, really, really uh, need. I think that maybe um, like in bilingual schools, they're looking forward like making you bilingual and have like a second language but maybe yes it's not from mexico english is not from mexico so it could be foreign language okay you have the idea both of you let me tell you what's the correct definition in in english speaking countries let me repeat in english speaking countries such as the united states canada England, Australia, well, they speak really funny, but they're still English speaking country. It's a second language for a foreign person. So for example, if I, or if Juanito Perez go to the, goes to the States and learns English, he will learn English as a second language because everything surrounding him is English. Mm -hmm. So he gets to practice outside the classroom he gets to practice English outside the classroom. He gets to live English outside the classroom, right? So that's why our paisanos go to the States for three or four months, come back, and they speak English. Very bad English, but it's still English. Mm -hmm. And they are like, um, um, and things like that, no? Okay, so that's because and it, it, it has a reason. Aparte que es una payasada, let me tell you this. It's called total immersion. Because that person goes to a native country. Eh, hablo de, de, de Virginia or New York. ¿no? Si van a Los Ángeles, pues es como ir downtown. ¿no? <laughs> but if, if it's a total immersion, it's a second language. It becomes a second uh, mother tongue. In Mexico, or let me paraphrase it, in Spanish speaking countries, teaching English is a foreign language because everything surrounding that student is English. I mean, excuse me, it's Spanish. So the student doesn't have the chance to practice outside the classroom, does it? You, you, you might have one or two nerds that will like, a, you know, like practice English outside the, the classroom, but a normal student, an average student, will throw the, the backpack on the, on the bed y se olvida de inglés hasta el otro día. Now, this is very important to, to be emphatic. Why? Because if you don't realize that your student doesn't practice outside the classroom, you forget about oral production in the classroom. 
you will forget about speaking activities in the classroom. And then you as a teacher, you will keep talking and talking and talking. We discussed about TTT, remember, like a couple of classes ago? Well, it's the same thing in this case. You need, you must have your students practice English in the classroom, okay? So let's continue. The CLT emphasizes interaction as both the means and the ultimate goal of learning a language. It refers to the communicative approach of the teaching of foreign languages or simply the communicative approach. Continue reading Salem. Communicative language teaching makes use of real life situation where communication is required. The teacher set up a situation that students are likely to encounter in real life. Unlike the traditionalist method of language teaching, which relies on repetition and drills, the, com the communicative approach can leave students in suspense as to the outcome of a class exercise, which will vary according to their reaction and responses. Very good. So check it out. Uses real life situations for conversations. And we can give you a very simple example. Kindergartens or, or first graders. Hello, how are you? And the answer is? Fine, thank you, and you? That's not real, is it? How many times like that? So uh, in the communicative approach say, says that you need to use real life situations. Many years ago, I went to a, 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 um, a seminar per se, in uh, in uh, England, in, um, in a city called Bath, is like two hours from London. Anyways, so I got to the hotel and uh, and I asked, "May I use the yellow pages, please?" Is it was it incorrect? No. The girl looked at me and said, "Ha, you're a teacher, right?" <laughs> Nobody talks like that, you know. So uh, the CLT stands for real communication, real practice of the, of the uh, oral production, okay? The, the real life situation changes from day to day. Continue reading, Christina. The real life simulations change from day to day. Students' motivation to learn comes from their desire to communicate in meaningful ways about meaningful topics. Very good, what does it mean? Number one, number one is the Salim. The primary aim of foreign language learning is communication with users of the foreign language. That's your aim. That's your aim. Let me let me ask you something. Which you this is a tricky question. What is what, what's best? English, uh, uh, British English or American English? They are both good, correct. Okay, Salim. Mm, I if you want to have a certification, I think you need to learn more about British English. But if you want to communicate more, I think you need American English because it's more probably that you encounter someone American than than a British people than British people. Okay, actually, both answers are you know make sense, but. As far as communication, both are equally important and equally good. It has to do with, with a new tendency. Is like, for example, if you uh, if you turn Netflix or, or uh, uh, Prime Video or whatever, and you turn you turn the the audios, you will have like in our country, Espanol Latino America, Espanol Castellano, Espanol España, Espanol. Which one is the best? None, they're all the same. Same thing happens in English. We have British English, English English, American English, Hindu English, Japanese English, etc., etc., etc. So your main goal is that students communicate, right? And the only thing that, or the only way to achieve that is that students actually practice English in the classroom. Number two, Christina. 
Students study the foreign language as a system of communication. A system of communication. Check it out. System. What comes to your mind when you say the word system, Christina? Mm, like. Uh, order and following rules and following. Mm, I don't know, like having a structure. Processes, structures, elements. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent. In number three. Students learn and practice the foreign language through communicative activities. I repeat, different books, different names, communicative activities, conversation tasks, talking time, less talk, etc., etc., etc. In other words, is conversation activities. Notice what uh, Margie S. Byrne says: an expert in the field of communicative language teaching, language is interaction. It is interpersonal activity and it has a clear relationship with society. In this light, the language study has to look at the use on the function. Memorize this because this is going to be like the core of your classes. The use or the function of the language in context, both its linguistic context, what is expected before and after, and its social and situational context, where is speaking, what is the role, uh, social roles, etc. If I if I say the word sex to a I don't know eighteen year old girl, what does the girl think? No, pues ya sabes, no. Este, las campanas de la iglesia, el vestido de novia, las cortinas de su casa, cómo la va a llamar los bebés. But if I say the word sex to a 20 year old boy, this is going to be very different. <laughs> so, this is what it says here it says, society involves, affects, education affects, interpersonal activities affects, etc., etc. And all of that is part of the system for them to practice. Because if I focus or you focus only in grammar or only in the Hello, how are you, English? That person is not going to communicate effectively in the real world. Again, that's why many persons, many people go through universidad, secundaria, prepa, posgrados, and they're still in a stupid basic one. Because they haven't developed their speaking activities or the speaking uh, skills. All right. In other words, we make English as a real tool to communicate, considering, remember, uh, interaction, interpersonal activity, and clear relationship with society. All right. The communicative approach helps us to teach how to use grammar, how to use vocabulary, how to. Very important. Memorize that. It's not just enough to teach in grammar, but how to teach, how to use grammar, when to use it, in what situations. It's not enough to teach uh, vocabulary, but when to use it, how to use it, in what context. No? I'll give you an example, the word gay. Gay, it means happy, you know? Actually, actually, the 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 the, uh, the all very old American guys uh, in movies, or uh, they would say, uh, "I'm very gay today," <laughs> because it means happy, you know. You now it has changed again. The context changed, the society changed. So now you have to teach real life situations, right? So the communicative approach helps us for specific functions and real life situations. Number one, Christina, read it. In the past, the primary aim of language learning seemed to be use of the grammatical system. The only practical task was translation, and that was usually translation of great literature, rather than letters to the bank manager, for instance. Yeah, so 
the traditional way of teaching or the, the Kule teachers, they only used grammar, they only use translation, they only use. So yes, the students become very good at translating, very good even for reading, mm -hmm. very bad for speaking. Mm -hmm. So the new tendency says, use real life, use uh, situations and that they can actually use their, their English, okay? Huh. I was worried about my <laughs> little one. I was trying to meet all the time. Anyways, um, okay. So today we see continue reading, Salim. Today we see our primary aim as teaching the practical use of English for communication. Practical use. Memorize that, teachers, misses. It's very important. Practical. When when you teach when when you teach your students the practical usage of the English, they are motivated. I give an example: verb to be the stupid verb to be, no, <laughs> that you see uh, verb to be all over your life. Anyways, um, I am, you are. It goes, oh, I miss again. But then, if you give them some sort of real situations, if they are teenagers. Guess what? You're going to go to, I don't know, I don't even know the new the new antros in Mexico City, but uh, I used to go in La Condesa, oh, no, it's not Cuban. I don't know, it's many years ago. Uh, but if you go to La Condesa, to the, whatever antro is the new, the new antro, and uh, this is a very Australian nice hot girl, what would you say to her? What do you think the boys want to do? Well, they want to speak. See the difference? Same mm -hmm. topic, same vocabulary, but now he has the practical usage mm -hmm. of the English. Okay. Uh, who's next? Is the Christina. Learning English as a system of communication. Language contains many systems, one of one of which is the system of grammar. Use of grammar is still important, but only as a as a means to successful communication. That's the core. System has many elements. Grammar is one of them, but it's only for successful communication. Again, if your student speaks and communicates, then you have succeeded. According to, can I, give you, I give you my own experience. I, according to Cambridge, there are five levels of English. Este, eh, Ket, eh, que es este, eh, ay, es, que, 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 knowledge, uh, something, something, a stupid basic one. <laughs> then is the, the preliminary, then the first, que sería como intermedio, then advanced, y low proficiency. Advanced es, es, es como una, una persona que ha estudiado más de 20 años inglés. Proficiency es un nativo que tiene doctorado in English, okay? I have number four, the advanced. I don't have the, the fifth one. He's an exam before the pandemic and I fail. And I fail in the oral exam. And you know why? Because the, uh, the, um, the Cambridge, the Cambridge uh, examiner told me, it's because your English is very Mexican. Well, yeah, you know. Because you're Mexican. But you know, yeah, it's exactly. So, and, I, and I'm, I don't intend to <laughs> change that. <laughs> but anyways, that's, a, that's my, my perspective. But yes. Bezos, Bezos is game. Es avanzado. Bezos is first. Es el, es el tercero, number three. Okay. Okay. Bezos is number three. You have been, you, you, you are like B2. Okay. You know, you know I, I need to do some other exams and also Salim is B2. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, yes. Salim mm -hmm. is also B2. In order to have like a scholarship in other country, you need to be B2. Yes, minimum. Mm -hmm. At least, at least. I have guy, which is the next one. 
and um, I did the exam like five years ago. It's bad for your self esteem. <laughs> <sighs> and then and then I think I I'm a, I'm a speaking examiner, so for me at free that free uh, Cambridge give it for free. Um, I'm not interested in having the five number five. Really. Okay. I need to I need to. This is off the record, okay? I need, I need to fake my accent. I, I, I'm not interested in them. That's, mm -hmm. that's okay. Okay, anyways. Fake so, it, I want to listen to it. <laughs> I, I actually have at five o'clock today, uh, because we did some examinations a month ago. So every time we do examinations, my team leader gives me feedback. And my, my team leader, today I, I should have recorded it. He is, o sea, has visto Juan, Juan Diego de, de las pinturas? He is like that. I mean, he's really Mexican. Okay. I, don't have any, I don't have anything that I have. Okay. Respectfully, he's very mm -hmm. Mexican. But he takes the accent. I, I have an issue with that. I, 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 I don't know. It's, it's me, okay? Mm -hmm. he, he speaks very... He does good, though. He's... He's a team leader, and uh, anyways, I probably shouldn't say that. Anyways, continue. <laughs> so, um, but your aim, he says, your aim is to um, is, uh, to have your students talk in English. Yeah. All right, that's your aim. I give you, I give you this example. How long have you been here, and how long are you here for? Which one is the best? Or excuse me, which one is correct? Um, have you been here? Okay. I think I both are, are correct, but the second one, maybe you can use it for a casual conversation, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Actually, both are okay and both are incorrect. Let me repeat it. Both are fine. Okay, let me let me put it um, como debe decirse. Both are colloquially correct mm -hmm. or acceptable. You understand the word colloquial? Yes. Okay, that's from the street informal, right? But grammatically, it's incorrect. The rule says that you can finish a sentence with a preposition. Here and for is a preposition, so it's incorrect. If I if you do this in in a formal exam you will have a, a cross. So uh, how should we say it? Uh, how, for how long? Have you been uh -huh. in Mexico? You cannot say it ah, like yeah. here. Exactly. So my point being, the point is, if a student says, how long are you here, here for, Timis? You might say, este mijo, hay que corregirlo. But you, may, you need to be tolerant because your aim is that students speak English. Yes, and don't block them. Like exactly. if they're talking and you say, no, 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 you're going to block them. Exactly. They go blank. And that's even worse for you. Very good, excellent. So bottom line, communication approach, excuse me, the communicative approach uh, focuses in functions, not in sentences, okay? I give an example, sentences, I am a teacher, I'm giving a lecture, we had a coffee break, etc. cetera. In the communicative approach, socializing, getting and giving information, Expresses them, expressing emotions, etc. The sentence is, um, we had a coffee break. Instead of expressing emotions, how do you feel with your best friend? Ah, we had a coffee break because blah, blah, blah. The practical usage in the situation. You're okay, Este Cristina? Okay, cool. Yes, thank you. All right. I'm just changing places because someone's gonna use that room. Oh, okay, that's okay. That's fine. 
I um, I'm here with my three little babies. Es que la otra se me pone acá atrás. Mami, no me dejas. Okay, there it is. So, in order to, in order to, um, in order to have our students practice English, we must have in our classes communicative activities. Again, conversation tasks, um, etc. Something that they speak English, okay? What are these? Can you read this, Alan? Because Christina is watching porn. Activities in classroom where the purpose is to produce language previously learned. Very important this is. The communicative activities or the conversation tasks is to practice. Let me repeat, practice. No learning, no new vocabulary, no new words, no new grammar. It's to practice the language previously learned. Why is this important, Salim? You may say, ah, for C, teacher, obviously, though. So why is it important, Salim? For, I don't know. How do you say in English? Para que se suelten. <laughs> so, no, actually the same thing, the, to lose their tongue. Very good. Uh, they need Very to good. lose their, their tongue. Very good. But check it out. It might be very obvious, but I've seen teachers saying or trying to ask uh, from students to draw conversations that they don't know. Yes, so a colleague teacher walks into the classroom, pair work, you are with your, uh, with your best friend, you are in the, in the cafe, so talk about the plans for the future. What are your plans? Yes, and then basic one. Y entonces empieza el Miss. ¿Cómo se dice? Miss, ¿y ahora qué digo? Miss, ¿y cómo, cómo era aquí? Don't do that. This is, a, this is a real thing. If your students start saying that in the, you know, in, um, in an average, it's okay, you know, like, Miss, ¿cómo se dice? Una palabra es fine. But if everyone, if everybody is asking and everybody is asking and asking, that means that they are lost. Guess whose fault is that? Your fault. So no, that's, that, that's what it means. Don't, don't, don't assume students know. Don't ask the students something that they don't know. I repeat, a conversation task, is to practice something that they have already learned. Okay, good. So there are main, uh, uh, excuse me, six main characteristics of a communicative activity. A desire to communicate, a communicative purpose, a focus on the language content, variety of language used, no teacher intervention and the no control or simplification of the material. So again, for a successful and effective conversation activity, you need to have these six characteristics, okay? Let's go, yes, Salim. Uh, uh, they're going to explain everyone, right? Yes. Ah, uh, okay, then. Okay, okay, good. Number one, a desire to communicate. Read this, Christina. In a, in a communicative activity, there must be a reason to communicate. When someone asks a question, the person must wish to get some information or some other form of result. Good. Do you agree with this? Yes. Good, there must be a reason. And then the other person, must want 
to respond. If there is no desire or if there is no reason to communicate, communication or the conversation will fail. Okay? So, check this out. Continue reading, Christina. If the students do not want to be involved in communication, then that communication will probably not be effective. It's Simple the same. Stuff. Simple as that. It happens in the classroom. If the students don't want to be involved in the conversation, the conversation is not happening. Mm -hmm. And if the conversation is not happening, then they don't get to practice English, and then they don't learn English, and then chaos and anarchy in your classroom. Let me ask you something, Christina. Why would a student... I hear you, okay. Why would a student don't want to be involved in a communicative activity? Because we are talking about something that are that is out of their interest, or maybe it's not Excellent. functional from them. Very good. That's you. That's that's the reason. If a, if a, if a student is not interested in the conversation, he will not be motivated to talk, okay? Mm -hmm. um, one time I was, I was given a class in, 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 um, in a prepa many years ago. I was about your age, no, a little bit younger anyways. So I had to talk about cricket in, in, a, in a teaching can and can't. You know, I can, I can, I can, I can't. And the sports and the sports was cricket. This is this is in Mexico City. <laughs> cricket. Do you know what cricket is? The sport. Yes, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's uh, well silent because she's, she's a nerd, but not just kidding. But cricket, it's it, well, it's very popular in, in England, obviously, and very popular in India. But in in, in Mexico, it's uh, have you seen Alicia Pais de las Maravillas? Well, it's they, like la reina del corazón. Está jugando that's cricket exactly. So. Uh, uh, it, if I if I, I did it, I did my class. It was a uh, it was one of the worst class classes ever. My students didn't pay attention to me. Chaos and energy, blah blah blah. And what do you do when you're you prepare a class like a full class, and your students don't care about the theme, so you just change the theme, or you have to improvise the whole class. Okay, if, okay, that's a very good question. Number one, improvisation is not good. No. You might be super teacher, Gerson, but improvisation is not good. Yes. So what do you do? Num uh, three main premises for you in silent. Number one, know your students. You will prevent most of the problems in your classroom if you know your students, okay? Number two, if you see that because of some reason you thought they might be interested, but they aren't, you might change a little bit of the tone of the class, or if you <coughs> see that definitely they don't, they don't, uh, they're not interested and not paying attention, you better Stop the class and do something that you have prepared, like a joker. We're gonna discuss that in a moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Not not in, in, in the following class. Joker is something that is in, in your under your sleep, right? A game or something that you know that are interested. Mm -hmm. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. So so in, in the same same example that I was telling you, I did the cricket class was very bad on the next day I had the same class different group so I did I changed from cricket to soccer America Chivas and it was a total success same class different topic so again students need to be motivated to talk relevant topics interesting topics etc once they are motivated, they need to have a purpose. Silent, can you read this? 
They should be using language in some way to achieve an objective, and this objective or purpose should be the most important part of communication. Same, same, uh, same example with uh, cricket. Uh, I said cricket is not good. Change it to soccer. America Chivas. Everybody was interested. Now that you have the attention, then you give them a purpose. And my case was can and can't. That was my purpose, right? Uh, I continue reading, Salim. If the students do have a purpose of this kind, then their attention should be centered in the content, centered, centered in the content of what is being said, not the language form is being used. Good, excellent. Example? Example. When we ask students to describe their bedroom's furniture to their partners, we are creating a communicate, we are communicative, no, sorry. We are creating a communicative purpose. Very good. Same example with the can and can't. I got their attention. They were motivated. Now I will ask them to express if they could or in the past or if they can play soccer or not. Um, for example, if your topic is traveling, what could be a purpose? Booking, um, sightseeing, traveling, uh, rent a car, okay? Okay. Good. And then focus on the language content, Christina. Read. In real life, we do not ask about our friend's family in order to practice have or has forms. Right, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't describe family to say he, he or has. No. We ask the question because we are interested in the information. That is to say, we are interested in the language content and not in the language form. Exactly. So, um, having a purpose for the activity, this will come naturally. Exactly. When they are talking, let them talk. They have a purpose, they will speak. They might speak me, Tarsa, and you, Jane. That's okay. Let mm -hmm. them know because you are not interested at that moment on changing that. You're just interested in them to practice. Yes, Christina, you want to say something? Yes. What do you think about, I don't know, when uh, some student ask or say something, but they had like um, maybe grammar mistake or... I don't know, um, like um, say it again, but correctly. Like I understood what you what I understood what you said, but you can say it like in a different way. Not saying that information, just saying again in a correct form. Good. That is called error correction. Correct. Okay. We're not going to discuss that until next week. Okay. Because there are techniques for that. Yeah. I just give you for you for the both of you, for, for Salem and for Christina. The first premise and error correction, avoid to say no. No, uh -huh, don't say no. Uh -huh. Okay, don't say no and avoid giving the answer. Okay. Given the answer makes a student lazy. Okay. Give them uh, strategies or exactly. I think la misma me gusta me dice. Okay. So, there are strategies to correct students, but let's not go there because it's a it's, you know it's a long topic. Yes. Okay, good. So for example, your grammar form is a simple, a simple pass. Excuse me, your grammar form a simple pass. What could be your language content? Famous people, last vacations, last, last trip to Europe, etc. No digo nombres, nada más digo iniciales. Cristina fue. And then a variety of language use. Can you read this, is this Ale? In normal communication, we do not repeatedly use the same language forms. In fact, we usually try to avoid repetition. 
Example, teacher, is it correct I'm doing great for how are you? Instead of saying, how are you fine? No quiero decir eso. Quiero decir, I'm doing great. Would that be okay? If a student says, hello, how are you? And the student responds, good teacher, I'm doing great. Le vas a decir, no, 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 you need to say, fine, and you? Would you say that? No, exactly, that's the point. A variety of language used. You need to give them real situations, real authentic English. Why, Salem, continue reading. Languages are different than exact science. Do not be squared. Don't be a square, square-minded. Exactly. That's why it's very difficult to teach engineers. Engineers want, engineers want the formula, the structure. Y por qué esto y por qué lo otro. Lo vimos con las multiple intelligences, right? Este, no, no, no. Languages are different. You need to use a variety uh, of language because uh, everyone is different. Uh, uh, my mom was from, from Chihuahua. My father was from Mexico City. They, they use very different accents, very different vocabulary, very different uh, um, type of uh, words. Teacher, I might have a problem with that <laughs> because I, uh, um, well, uh, you say I was, I, I was a nerd. Yes, I'm a nerd because I, I tend to be logical, mathematical in many things. So it's kind of hard to not do a, <laughs> a formula <laughs> of things. So yeah, it's kind of, it's yeah, hard. I know, I know, I can, I've been observing you. You are very methodologic and, and that's okay. Very annoying. <laughs> But it's okay, <laughs> you know, it's, it's part of your nature at the end of the day, no? All right, in many classroom activities, I'll continue reading, Christina. In many classroom activities, we often try to create situations in which students will repeatedly use a limited number of language patterns. This is also artificial. Please don't do that. Yes, if you have, if you have a, a list of sentences, a list of word, and you only have those, that's not correct. Use authentic language, okay? Uh, ah, very important, not, yes. How is that that you have a list? I don't understand that. Yeah, yeah. Like for example, you have in your book, in the student's book, um, same example, very, very stupid example. How are you? Fine, thank you, and you? And that is your list of sentences, your list of conversation. Repeat and memorize. That's old school. Don't do that. I mean, it's, it's fine to begin with. Then teach them authentic and real English. Okay, okay. thank you. And no teacher intervention. This is very important. Can you read this, Este Salem? When you're buying a ticket for the Lion King at the theater, your teacher is not usually beside you to help or correct your English. Do you agree with that? You know, you're, you're not going to have teacher years on all the time. Continue. Teacher intervention in classroom communicative activities adds to the artificiality. 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 Good. Christina? By intervening, we mean telling students that they are making mistakes, insisting on accuracy, and asking for repetition, etc. In other words, if a student A starts talking to a student B in the conversation task, don't interrupt. If you interrupt, they go blank and the conversation is screwed. Don't do that. Avoid that, okay, at all costs. This undermines the communication purpose and continue reading, Christina, the last one. The teacher may, 
No, sí, vamos ahí, ¿no? Yes. No. The teacher may be involved a participant, as a participant and will also be watching and listening carefully so as to be able to conduct feedback at the end. Exactly. Now, this is very important, Mrs. It's very important because we as a teacher will, will, will tend to correct at the moment. It's part of our nature. No, don't do that. As you oh, know, one thing say and let them talk. Okay. And then at the end, you give feedback. It's very important that you monitor whether it's online or in a physical classroom, monitor, listen attentively, maybe write some notes, and then give feedback to your students. I personally, when it's a, when it's a, a, a well, it's, it doesn't matter if it's an online or a physical classroom, I listen and then I write the mistakes. And then at the end, I give to everybody the mistakes or, you know, the solutions, the feedback. Y hasta puedes ver sus caras. Ah, así era. But don't interrupt. It's very, how can be a teacher involved? Look at the picture. This is actually a real picture. The teacher is just listening and everybody else is talking. All right? So far so good? Okay. No control, and the last one, no control or simplification of the material. Salem, point number one. In the classroom, we often use graded or simplified materials as prompts for communicative activities. Yeah, okay. We use flashcards. We use cutouts. Uh, now with the online classes, we have Google Images. <laughs> we, many, many resources that we use, yes or no? Okay. These will not be available in the real world. Or at least not at hand, right? Okay, continue reading as the, the number three, Christina. Often students work with material which force them to use certain language or at least restrict the student's choice of what to say and how to say it. Don't do this. Don't do that. In other words, if you have a flashcard with a sentence below or words below, it limits the students' responses in a conversation. In fact, let me tell you this, Cambridge, Cambridge has a rule when applying exams in Cambridge. For example, in October, I'm going to have TKT apply in my school, okay? They need to clear the classroom, uh, the walls, no words in the walls, because limits the brain. Very interesting. So. When you have a conversation task, you will have images, you will have, uh, 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 um, I don't know, flashcards, whatever, but no sentences. Okay? Um, continue reading, Mr. Salim. By restricting the students' opinions of the materials are denying, opinions of the materials are denying the language by variety. You pronounce it like that? Priority, yes. Priority, characteristic, which we have to say is important for genuine communication. Genuine communication, very good. Premise number two, less control material, the better. What is control material? Material that limits the student. An image with sentences is control. An image with uh, keywords, that's control. No, no, no. If you're going to use material, make it simple. Something like this. You see the picture? This is a collage. This is free material. No control. You see it? You can have 1,001 different conversations with this material. And that's the purpose of the conversation. Let students fly in their conversation. I use this a lot, this poster, this image a lot, like for continuing the story, the, 
for all levels. If it's basic, can you tell me the colors? What is happening? Describe the images to your partner. If it's advanced, uh, advanced level with your partner, discuss the, the story. Blah, 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 but no words. Okay. We're going to have, we're going to do this, uh, what time is it? I'm going to give you the uh, homework and then we'll do this for next week, okay? The, next week or next class? Next Thursday, next class. Sorry, I, I, I have Wednesday. a class on Saturday. And uh, <laughs> no, no, next Thursday. Ah, no, perdón. Es 15, ¿verdad? No, no es cierto. Next Tuesday. Okay. Next well, we week. have our class on Wednesday. Yeah, 15 and 16, no tenemos clases. Calle en 15, a ver. 12. Mm -hmm. No, es 14. El miércoles es 14. Oh, it's Wednesday. Yeah, right. Okay, so yes, no. Next Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. So, um, Salem. Este, ah, bueno, perdón. No, 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 es de, es, it's, um, eh, class topic. Famous mm. <coughs> people, okay? Objective. Practice. Simple task. Uh -huh. Then. Uh, teenagers, teenagers, um, three minute, three to four minute activity. Ahí está. Sale, esa es la tarea. You're going to recycle. Simple past, there are teenagers, and la tarea is conduct a conversation activity using this description. O sea, acuérdense, es practicing. Imaginemos que ya vimos simple past con ellos. What? is the activity that you're going to give so they can practice simple pass. Mm -hmm. understand, the, understand the activity? Yes. How many activities? Just one. Okay. Para que sepan los demás. All right. Good. All right. So uh, that's one homework. In the second homework, les voy a enviar un PDF with, uh, it's, a, it's a, a paper from, uh, from Cambridge that tells you communicative activities. The, the purpose of it, you know, it's theory, and then a list of actual communicative activities. Okay. So, use it, okay? so just that is just reading it and, and tell me your opinion on next Wednesday, okay? Or this Wednesday, should I say? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Let's take a safety for today. Thank you, teacher. On one, on three, one, two. Good. All right. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Um, well, I will see you later at eight. Right. I think it's the same. My ID.